Coming up on Ag Week TV, recent Supreme Court rulings rock the ag community. Crop conditions in the region are variable, reflecting the path of recent rains. We'll visit Rugby, North Dakota, where many cattle producers are making the tough decision to disperse their herds. And some farmers display their patriotism on the July 4th holiday in year round. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. President Joe Biden took to the road this week to sell the economic benefits of the infrastructure deal he recently struck with Republicans. Biden was in La Crosse, Wisconsin Wednesday to share details of the package that will cost $973 billion over five years and create millions of jobs. The deal is less than the $2.3 trillion the president originally proposed, but still includes roads, bridges, broadband, and electric vehicles. Biden and the ag community are hoping it makes it through Congress because the investment is needed in all of these areas. If we don't keep updating them, they're so old, some of the locks and dams on those rivers and things and, and the bridges, if we don't keep that updating them, we'll lose that competitive advantage. He says the key is to find the money to pay for infrastructure without raising taxes. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled in favor of oil refiners seeking waivers from the renewable fuel standard. The decision allows the EPA to extend small refinery exemptions to any refinery at any time, not just if they've received annual extensions. While disappointed, biofuel supporters don't think the ruling means the EPA will return to granting a large number of exemptions. Plus, the original ruling stated refiners must prove economic harm to get the waivers, and that still stands. USDA's June acreage and quarterly stocks report was bullish for row crops. Corn acreage was up 1.6 million from March, but below estimates at 92.7 million acres, with stocks down 18% from 2020. Soybean acreage was unchanged from March at 87.6 million, but below estimates, stocks were 44% below 2020. And wheat acreage was above March in all but spring wheat, but stocks were the lowest in six years. And joining us with market analysis is Randy Martinson. And we did see corn and soybean acreage come in below expectations by quite a ways. That really puts a lot of pressure on yield now going forward, doesn't it, Randy? Especially because the increase in acres over last year in March kind of came in the drought areas, right? Right. I mean, you know, for corn, primarily the Corn Belt states backed off on acres. The Northern Plains, Western Corn Belt picked up on the acres. For soybeans, everybody increased acres a little bit, but a primarily most of the acres increase came from the northern plains and the western belt again which is where the biggest concerns are with weather so yeah right now we're going to be focusing a lot on what happens with weather and what the potential yield is for this crop so we have a lot of the corn belt and drought already and if we just take what we know now and say we continue to see hot dry conditions how much do you anticipate yield will drop? Well, we could be looking at a yield decrease pretty significant. You know, it wouldn't be anything to see a 5% drop in the yield. Uh, I think that would be pretty reasonable at this point, seeing what the conditions are up in the Northern Plains and, and the Western Corn Belt. Uh, same with soybeans. I think we could see the same kind of reduction. Now, a lot can change if we get some cooler weather and some rain, and that certainly is going to help. But right now, the forecast for the first couple of weeks of July does not look conducive for good crop development. So maybe ending stocks on corn below a billion bushels and maybe soybeans back down to pipeline supplies. I, I would expect that we're going to see, at least at some point, we're going to see corn stocks below a billion and it's likely we'll see the soybean stocks drop below 100 million. So where do prices need to go back up to to factor that in? You know, right now, I think we need to see the markets go back up to the old highs. I wouldn't be surprised to see us maybe even uh, cross above those. Uh, I don't expect corn to cross over into the seven area, but I think we could be in the upper sixes uh, as far as soybeans. Again, I'm not looking for the big run to $17, $18 unless we see a major disaster take place. So what about a wheat? We did see an increase in winter wheat acres, spring wheat down from last year, but it's really more about harvested acres there, isn't it? It 
is. Right now, it really doesn't matter what's got planted. It's just how many are going to get harvested. I'm expecting, you know, somewhere between a 30% to a 50% cut in our production. So how high do you think spring wheat needs to go here? Spring wheat needs to get up into the mid nines to be able to ration the supply. I mean, we're, the bigger problem is going to be you got a winter wheat crop that's not in very good condition or very good quality. It's going to need spring wheat to blend with it, but we're not going to have a lot to be able to do that. We need to get the price up to ration supply. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Randy Martinson with Martinson Ag. Crop conditions were mixed this last week, depending on where the rain fell. Spring wheat ratings improved in the Dakotas, but dropped 19 percent in Minnesota. South Dakota's corn condition deteriorated by 10 percent, while Iowa improved by 4 percent. And soybean ratings dropped 8 percent in Minnesota, 7 in South Dakota, but were up in the rest of the region. On this week's Crop Stop, Mikkel Pates found a west central Minnesota farm hoping for rain. Von Modal raises corn and soybeans with his wife Julie and their two sons. He says despite an early frost and some strong winds, his crop isn't as bad as much of the region, but timely rains are vital. The heat has probably hurt us worse in the last uh, three weeks than what the no moisture has. Weed pressure has been probably a little more than normal because our pre-herbicide we put down really didn't work because we didn't get enough water to, to activate it. So, so uh, spraying has kind of been a challenge. They also own and operate Modell's truck and trailer sales. Meanwhile, crop conditions improved in Iowa last week, 4% on corn and 1% on soybeans. However, most of that was in the south and east. In northwest Iowa, drought conditions have intensified with only spotty rains and 90 degree plus days. Even at V5 growth stage, corn is setting its girth, which impacts yield potential. We've had a couple brutal weeks of weather and uh, really the crops have held in there pretty well but uh, especially the sandy spots and the compacted areas are starting to show pretty bad and we've taken the top off some of the crop. Widman's farm has had less than an inch and a half of rain and he thinks the early crop stress shaved corn yields by around 10 percent. I think some of our best fields can still be over 200 but some of our hills and, and tougher fields are you know we've lost 20 30 bushels potentially. He says soybeans have shut down but they could still get a crop with August rain. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a major grain theft case is wrapping up in court. Will farmers get any of their money back? Superior Grain Equipment is committed to quality and service. Protect your bottom line and your future with superior quality, protection, and reliability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009 with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just push your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's going to fit your needs. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you. From top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvests. A 
A family whose grain marketing speculation and cover-up cost farmers more than $11 million agreed to a criminal plea agreement this week in state court. Michael Pates was in here in South Dakota at the hearing for the owners of the defunct H&I Grain of Hetland. Speculating grain trader Jared Stephenson pled guilty to luring farmers with grain contract premiums that got more hefty as the finances of his company, H&I Grain, became more desperate. Farmer victim Frank Virgil says the money funded the Stephenson's upscale lifestyle. The life of the rich and famous, so to speak. Individual farmers' losses and unpaid grain delivered to the elevator range from six figures to more than a million dollars. Virgil says he doesn't expect to get much of his money back. That's a joke. It's a, I think it's a joke from day one. They're not going to make any restitution. Stephenson and his wife Tammy pled guilty to theft by deception. They face up to five years in the state pen and a $10,000 fine. Jared's mother, Joanne, pled guilty to failure to notify the POC of the company's financial status. She faces up to two years in prison and a $4,000 fine. So while time in the state pen is a possibility for Jared Stephenson, his wife, and his mother, it'll be a while before we find out what that is. For Ag Week, this is Michael Pates at Huron, South Dakota. You can read all the details at agweek.com. The U.S. Supreme Court won't hear a challenge to California's Prop 12. The North American Meat Institute in 20 states filed an appeal saying it will increase costs for producers and consumers. Prop 12 goes into effect January 1, 2022 and requires producers to raise animals in larger spaces to sell meat and eggs in California. 90% of Iowa is abnormally dry, with around 44% of the state in severe drought. The worst is in the northern and central parts of Iowa, where NOAA fish took in Iowa State's field day. It's concerning. We're at about 50% or below for precipitation. Northern Iowa farmers met with the state's top agronomists and entomologists at the annual field day at ISU's Northeast Research and Demonstration Farm, as the state faces its worst drought since 2012. It really started last fall because uh, we didn't get a huge replenishing of our soil moisture profile to begin with. And so that kind of continued on through this spring. Besides crop stress, dry conditions and heat are also a breeding ground for pests. So growers are urged to keep a close eye on their crops. So people are kind of bringing back an old school sampling method and using it once again. Retired ISU climatologist Elwyn Taylor says this year's extreme weather is a part of a long cycle that is unlikely to end for a few years. Are we moving into a drier period for the summer? We don't know, but we do know that there's enough harshness in the atmosphere that we want to pay attention to its effect on crops. Near Nashua, Iowa, this is Noah Fish for Ag Week. Ahead on Ag Week TV, drought is forcing some livestock producers to make some tough decisions. And later, some producers can qualify for emergency hang and grazing. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. Challenges, we all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high-velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. At Trans Systems, every day is a great day to haul beets. Our family-owned business moves more beets than anyone in the world. We enjoy good work and good pay, and many of us have been here for decades. Because it's a place where our opinions are heard, 
and our accomplishments are seen. We're your home every day and can take summers off. Here, our safety and yours matter most. Trans Systems, a sweet haul in the Red River Valley since 1983. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. It was another week of have and have nots in the region when it comes to our moisture situation. What will the rest of July bring? Here's John with our Acker Weather Outlook. Well, summer has certainly gotten itself organized here in the Northern Plains and the Upper Midwest this week. In fact, you could say a little more than that. It's turned quite hot and there's a lot more where that's come from. In fact, what is actually spilling into the Northern Plains this weekend, this 4th of July weekend, is the remnants of that Pacific Northwest heat dome and that is resulting in another round of very hot weather in the northern plains and uh, the outlook is for very spotty storminess so it's a combination of hot and dry which means that over the next couple of weeks it although there will be some areas that pick up heavy storms no doubt somewhere in the upper midwest northern plains region there will be some strong storms generally speaking it appears that drought conditions in this central part of the country are likely to worsen over the next two weeks the heat dome and the Pacific Northwest is really being crushed. It's being sent southward. Jet stream now fairly flat across the uh, Canadian United States border. But the hot weather has built into the northern plains. Now, it's not all going to be scorching. There will be a little bit of a relaxation of that heat. Basically, if you're in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, the 90s, maybe a few hundreds over the weekend are going to get squelched back into the 80s for the early part of the week. But they'll be back. Looks like the 90s will be rebuilding. Probably not a lot of 100 degree temperatures late this week, but it's going to be hot. Along the West Coast, the hot weather will mostly be confined to the deserts and across the South. Uh, characteristically average or normal 90 degree weather from Texas across to the southeast. But the southern plains will be hot. The Great Lakes area and the northern part of the Corn Belt will be, relatively speaking, the coolest part of the nation outside of the spine of the Rockies. It's just not going to be that hot in the uh, places like Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Some ideal corn growing weather for certain. It's just good that they're not going to have any of that really hot, hot, hot weather. Warm temperatures will continue to spread northward and by this upcoming weekend, I look for yet another round of, of excessive heat into much of the Northern Plains. The second week, now we're looking at mid-July, is not looking any different. That ridge of high pressure will be predominant. When it crashes a bit, there will be rain chances. When it strengthens a bit, it's just going to be hot. Speaking of it crashing and of that chance of rain, well, let's take a look at that. Scattered showers, thunderstorms will be mostly confined to the cooler areas of the Midwest over this first week, July. 4th through the 10th. Uh, it has been and will continue to be rather wet with monsoonal type rains down in Mexico. By monsoonal, I mean they're coming in from moisture off the Pacific. Pacific Northwest will be continued dry. No hope for rain in most of those areas. As we move into the second week, I look for that dry weather to spread eastward throughout the northern plains. In generally, it looks like the middle part of July will be a little less rainy across most of the United States. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts.
How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types, and tillage practices? It takes a renegade. The Summers VRT Renegade. Get the results you want in diverse field conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Adjust from light to aggressive tillage, including blade angle from 0 to 19 degrees, on the fly from the cab. Learn more at summersmfg.com or contact your Summers dealer. I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join me, Mike Speaker, from the Egg Week editorial team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you are involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. The severe drought conditions are forcing some livestock producers to make difficult decisions. As Emily Beal reports, livestock auctions are extremely busy this summer, but it's not what anyone wants to see. Ron Torgerson was a livestock auctioneer for more than 40 years, and he still likes to come around rugby livestock auction on sale days. He says this year is the worst drought he has ever seen. It's a sad, sad situation. All these guys are having to disperse a lot of their cows. We've got two complete herd dispersions today. Uh, there's no grass out in the pastures, and it doesn't look very good for hay. Six generations on the same dirt. But right now, the dirt is as dry as Bill Smith has seen it in decades. Smith farms and ranches in north central North Dakota. With more than 350 commercial and registered cattle, he's struggling with lack of forage production. 88 was bad, but this year's way, I'd trade for 88 in a heartbeat, because this is way worse. His normally lush pastures are only about 25% of normal. He was already concerned last fall as they went into the dry winter, then got very little snow. He deepened three additional water holes on his property, but it's just not enough. He says it's too late for rain. The small grains, it won't help. It looks like it's gonna, could possibly have nine kernels. And some of the hay land, it's probably too late unless we get a really lot of rain. It, the alfalfa will come, but the grass is done. With the excessive drought, Rugby Livestock Auction predicts that they'll be busy all summer long. With Ag Week, I'm Emily Beal in Rugby, North Dakota. With the drought, many counties in the region are eligible for emergency hang and grazing on CRP. 100% of counties in North Dakota qualify, 92% in South Dakota, and around one-third in Minnesota. The emergency designation is triggered when counties hit D2 or higher on the drought monitor. Many ranchers are worried about pasture conditions this year. They learned more at the North Dakota Grazing Coalition's annual tour at the Sand Ranch in Ellendale. While drought has hit much of North Dakota hard, Brad Sands says his pastures are holding up due to his rotational grazing program, which gives the native grasses a period of regrowth when the cattle are moved off one paddock onto another. More than 80 people attended this event. Still ahead, how many farmers show off their patriotism all year round. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009 with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. 
Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. Hi, neighbor! Oh, I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. This time of year, we see old glory flying everywhere, but for some farmers, it's an everyday occurrence. In this week's Ag Week cover story, Mikkel Pate shares his annual feature of some of the patriotic displays he's seen as he travels the countryside. Glenn Lightnum, other than Prussia, South Dakota. You can see his flag from Interstate 90, a mile from the Lightman Farm near Prussia, South Dakota. It's more than just a salute to the U.S. Every day that I can remember, my dad went out and put the flag up every morning, took it down every night, and he, he had passed away, and so I did it as a memorial for my dad. The flag measures 20 by 30 feet. He puts up two each year at a cost totaling $1,500. In fact, it's so big, some tourists once stopped thinking it was flying next to a Perkins, a restaurant chain also known for its huge flags. That's a true story. I go, I just fly this for myself. They went like that and drove off. Maurice Hoffman is showing his patriotism in a different way. His family wrapped their bales in red, white, and blue net wrap that they bought at a local equipment store. The wrapped bales stood in a neat row on their farm along US Highway 12, west of Bottle, South Dakota. Well, I know there's a lot of people driving by and they're really looking when they go by. It's nice. You have never lived out of this section, Section 20 of Holland Township. James Aaron Holtz was born and raised in a township where he still lives in west central Minnesota and where his family still farms. He's grateful for that, his state, his religion, his military service, and his country. So he flies three flags in front of his home. In America, I guess, I uh, believe in our country, our freedom. Proud to be a Minnesotan. They fly 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So whether it's a symbol of freedom, military service, or a memory of a loved one, farms and flags just seem to go together. This is Michael Pates for Ag Week. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself a great and safe week.